Honda refreshed the Ridgeline back in 2021. Today, Joe from Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie has given us the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE in your crystal black. You're still going to get that aggressive styling, standard all-wheel drive, one size fits all. That's what Honda says. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and we're gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. Honda has decided to make it a more aggressive styling fit. So that way it can go against those body on frames like your Toyota Tacoma, your Ford Ranger, but this is still a unibody structure. So the aggressiveness is gonna start in the front fascia. Blacked out grille with the Honda badging. And I like the way it sets with the chrome over the top. It's gonna be more of a smaller hood, but again, this is a unibody truck. I do like the fact that you're getting LED headlamps for your low and your high beams, your fog lamps and your turn signals. I like how everything's cleaned up and you have functional side vents. Everything in the front is functional except for the top part of the grill. The structures on it fits the profile for the vehicle, a height of 70.8 inches and the width at 78.6 inches. The ground clearance now, it's not gonna be the same as your Toyota Tacoma or the Ford Ranger, but you're still at 7.64 inches. So you can do a little bit of maneuvering, but this is not for the hardcore off-roading truck buyer. This is for an everyday use. You can also get some use out of the bed and for the towing. And I like that the bottom area here is the same color as the body. I wish that this matte black was also the same color only because whenever you're doing any waxing or anything like that sometimes you know you get it on there and it leaves a little bit of a white stain it's a little bit harder to clean off but it is something that is a little bit more rugged and it is more of that look for off-roading but again unibody suspension so it's going to be a more smooth driving traditional vehicle. And the way the bumpers are, they're more sporty derived. So that way it just encases these 18 inch dark gray five spoke alloy wheels. The disc reading behind it at 12.6 inches, the rear at 13.8 inches, a McPherson strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your stabilizer bar. The length at 210.2 inches. Now the weight distribution on that is gonna be 57.1 to 42.9, a wheelbase at 100 125.2 inches. The chrome surrounding all the windows. Because we have the utility package, you will have your roof rails with the crossbars and you got the running boards with the ridgeline badging. I also do kind of like that this is the matte black underneath here. And the only reason why I say that is because we have the running board. So it gives a little bit of a offset to the vehicle. I don't necessarily like it around all of the fenders because again, when you're cleaning the car, it really does leave some line segments. Because we got the all wheel drive setting, you're gonna have the intelligent traction management or you'll have your IVT M4, brake actuated limited slip differential. You have your blind spot monitoring. And I do like that we have the turn signals on the side view mirror caps that are also the same color as the paint. So they did a good job. And even on the line segments, when you look at it from a side profile, you'd believe that this is a bit of a rugged truck. Because we're competing against the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Tacoma 21, they decided to add the dual exhaust outlets to give that aggressive styling to this minivan V6 powertrain, which is what it needed for the rear, something that I was complaining about in 2020 and so forth. Towing on the vehicle at 5,000 pounds, so it will be less than the rivals, but the payload is still over 1,500 pounds, so you can get what you need. You can also still tow a boat or a jet ski, pretty much all that you need dual action tailgate, which is what I do like. If you open it this way by the all wheel drive badging, you have a cargo bed underneath here, just like a car. So the trunk that's inside is another 7.3 cubic feet, which is a lot of space considering this is a truck at the end of the day. With the dual action tailgate, you can open up just like a truck. And the best part, you can easily fit a four by eight sheet of plywood flat on the bed floor, which is not necessarily something normal in other trucks. Cargo length at 64 inches, a width of 60 inches between the wheel wheel housing at 50 inches, a height of 16.7 inches, giving us 33.9 cubic feet of storage. But this is a natural 
naturally aspirated V6, and that is something that we kind of like here at Hawkeye Rides. Let's start it up and hear that exhaust note. <laughs> The one-size-fits-all Honda Ridgeline, I think, is a good alternative if you're looking for a traditional truck with a more smooth ride. And the best part, they back it with a V6 producing 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission or your shift-by-wire. You're going to achieve 18 to 24 mpgs, a zero to 60, 6.9 seconds with a quarter mile, around 15.4 seconds. And I do like that we have more of an aggressive styling on all four corners, the roof rails being the same color as the body and also adding the trim on the side here to kind of close the back window so it gives that off-roading styling look to the vehicle even though it's not necessarily, but it is a good alternative to your Ford Ranger and your Toyota Tacoma. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Honda Ridgeline RTLE, you're gonna have 39.5 inches of headroom, 40.9 inches of legroom. The seat comfort, you're gonna sit a little bit lower so it feels like the hood's above you, keeping kind of an aggressive styling even in the interior. Black bucket leather seats, they're heated front seats, 10-way power adjustment that includes lumbar support and two-position memory for the driver. It's gonna be a four-way power adjustment for the passenger. You'll have your manual tilt steering wheel. Now, this steering wheel is large and it is a little bit heavy, so at the beginning, it's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but you do have the leather wrap. It is heated, multi-function with the paddle shifters. The gauge cluster will be an analog with a digital mile per hour readout, so it's efficient. You got your push button start and try climate control settings with the storage tier right underneath it. And you have your wireless charging pad for your phone with a USB and a 12 volt cup holders. You can easily fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle. I would say a 32 ounce is no problem. You have your push button setup for your automatic transmission, which is pretty easy. I do wish there was a gear lever only because it would give it a little bit more of a rugged styling. Open up in here and you have a little storage tray that you can move it's pretty deep with a USB and a 12 volt. And I like the fact that you have a table on top of it because you'll see in the rear, just in a second, it gives you a little bit more space for the back seat. As for your infotainment, you're gonna have your Honda navigation. So you have your pinch, you got your swipe. This has your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto, Sirius XM, Bluetooth connectivity, HD radio. Switching it to reverse, you do have full trajectory. It is just a reverse camera. You can click onto the different points so that way you can see even for your towing. And I do like the fact that when you look, you can see right here, you do have the front sensors as well. And when you move the steering wheel, it will also expand the line so it makes it easier for your reversing. At the end of the days, these are pretty much kind of like captain seats because you have the area here that you can adjust. So that way you can make it a little bit more of a comfortable ride. And I like the fact that the elbows are gonna be super soft because of this armrest here. The door panel, you're gonna get the one touch up and down for both of the front windows. Harder materials on the top, you got your blind spot monitoring inside and you have two tiers of storage. The top tier can easily fit pretty much like an iPad. That's how long it is with, I would say at least a 20 ounce bottle. On the bottom, you can easily fit five or six 16.9 ounce water bottles. So it is pretty efficient for the front of this cabin. Let's check out the back seats. For the back seats, I'm at 38.8 inches of headroom, 36.7 inches of legroom. So it's gonna be a little bit tight for people tall like me to fit three, which we'll see in a second how I look in the center. You do sit higher up and the door panels feel the same level as they are in the back. So you actually are sitting almost above the door panel, which gives more of an experience of a little bit of the off-roading look and aggressive styling 
to the interior, even into the rear. So I do like the fact that they're doing that even though it's not an off-roading vehicle. Cup holders in the center, I would say a 20 ounce max can fit. And you also have a little area that you could put some mints on the elbows. It's gonna be pretty soft on both sides. You do have two air vents and a little storage with two USB ports and storage behind both of the front seats. The floor is completely flat. These seats fold up to a 60-40 split. So you will have more cargo space. And because it's completely flat, you can easily put things, just slide it right in without any issues. As for the door panel, the only storage you're gonna have is on the top. So you can fit a larger cell phone, maybe a 32 ounce cup, and it's gonna only be soft materials where your elbows or arms are rested. Otherwise, everything's gonna be firm. There's no storage on the bottom. They do have the upgraded eight speaker, which is over 500 watts. So you're gonna hear that sound system in this cabin because it's not necessarily that big, but it does optimize the room. Let's see how I look in the center. Like I was saying in the front, the center console makes it easier for me to fit. Headroom, no issue. Legroom, I'm going to be against the front seats, but the sides of them blocking the central air vents. And for feet space, it's not gonna be an issue. As for shoulder space, the seats are pretty widened out. The door panels are not necessarily so thick. So you can fit three adults my size if you need to. The only disadvantage in the rear is it is a tri-climate control setting. However, there's no actual buttons to turn it up and down. You have to rely on everybody in the front seat. Otherwise, it's a pretty relaxed sit in the back. Taking the 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE out for our test run, the best part about this particular vehicle like I've been saying pretty much the whole review is the unibody construction platform what that does is it gives you a more soft ride and easy so for somebody that's looking to get their feet wet with a truck this is definitely a great starter truck if somebody's looking for off-roading like I was saying throughout the review it's not necessarily meant for that the one size fits all 280 horsepower we're going to see how well she does just give it a little throttle here and you'll start hearing that exhaust note around a three RPM. So it's not necessarily too bad. And it does change the gears very smooth. So I do like that. And the fact that it is super quiet, there's no dual pane windows. You do have all the safety features that's in the Honda line as well. So you don't really have to worry in that category. And you also have the adaptive cruise control too. So these are nice little attributes because when you're taking this vehicle on a long journey, you can do so in comfort. 262 pound feet of torque. This is what you're gonna get with the vehicle. Giving it some gas and livens up pretty good. It's not going to necessarily throw you back, but you're not expecting that with a pickup truck, not with this type of specs that we have. But you will be getting good gas consumption as well. Braking, if you need a hard brake, you can do so as well. Now, because the vehicle is a little bit of a length in the wheelbase as well, it's going to make it a little bit harder for doing three-point turns or even U-turns, which I'll show you shortly, because the car the way it is with the weight distribution. That's why we were talking about that on the exterior, because these are attributes that you really need to know whenever you're looking for a long-term purchase. And that's what you would do with this vehicle because Hondas are known to last for a very long time. As for the visibility, you do sit up enough. It's not necessarily gonna be sitting up like a Tacoma or like a Ranger. So don't expect that. But if you need to give it some gas, you can do so and it livens up pretty quickly. So that is a good thing as well. And as for maneuverability in out of anything it's pretty good for that part the steering is a going to be a little bit more weighted which is a good thing too because it is a truck you kind of want that so it's not really as artificial so i do like the fact that they give you that capabilities i do wish that the towing was a little bit but you know what at the end of the day you're going to have your pros and cons and there is three things that i like and three things that i dislike because anything more than that i'll be buying this vehicle to start off with the three things that i like the comfort to the vehicle. If you're a new truck buyer and you want something other than an SUV, you can do that and you're not going to sacrifice the ride. The second thing that I like is you get all of the upgraded information, you get all the safety. So if you're looking to go into Toyota or Ford, those vehicles are doing a full redesign in another year. So this one's already got the redesign of all the tech and all the bells and whistles. So you're already there. The third thing that I like about the vehicle is the fact that you still have the capability to do what you need to do. We're gonna check that turn radius and come back to the things that I dislike. Turn radius, you're going to be getting about three lanes and to give it the gas, they get you where you need to be. The three things that I dislike, like I was saying on the exterior, towing. Because this is a truck, you're going to wanna to tow 
more than 5,000 pounds. Now, if you are comparing it to SUV standards, it's right on point because a lot of the SUVs are at 5,000 pounds. But when you're comparing it to the off-roading capability vehicles or the ones that are body on frame construction, they can tow more. So it does put this a little bit underneath that. The second thing that I dislike is that tri-climate control, like I was saying in the interior specs, you have no knobs in the back, so it's really only functional for the front. So it kind of defeats the purpose of a tri-climate control setting. The third thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the storage in the back seats. They really don't give you a lot of cup holders or a lot of storage. The door panel is pretty much dry for the most part on storage. So it does lack in that category. But if you're looking for something that you could pretty much do everything, get your feet wet with a pickup truck, this is definitely a great alternative and something to look at because you do have the capacity of doing pretty much what any SUV would do. And you have a truck bed, plus you have that cargo box that makes it like a car. So it does have some good bullet points to give you an alternative. It's a silky smooth drive. I mean, something on a long journey or even stop and go traffic, you're not gonna be tired. The way the seat cushioning is, you sit pretty plush and I do like that. I don't necessarily like that when you go from the Sport to the RTLE, it's almost an eight to $10,000 bump in price. I get it, you're getting a lot more amenities, but in the same aspect, it makes it a little bit harder to configure the vehicle because each time you configure it up to another stage, you're pushing more to the $50,000 price point. I like to thank Joe here at Ocean Honda for giving us this 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.